Okay, so with the alpha update changes to mining that are now a thing, I wanted to go through all of the good, the bad, and the neutral changes just so that there, just so I could uh, get a better a better opinion of the update. So, in general, the good changes of this update are the pure ores, uh, mining gemstone spread in theory. In theory, is good. But gemstone spread does turn... well, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. The subfortunes are quite nice, I like how they do that. Um, the disabled... Uh, when you disable the perk in the Heart of Mountain, the visual change is quite nice, I really like that change. The forge changes are good in general, uh, there's not really anything bad about those changes. Um, the new mining reforges are quite good. Mining reforges before weren't particularly, uh, they weren't particularly good, and they weren't that impactful. Because either you would use refined or auspicious if you really want that extra eight fortune. Nowadays, well, I say nowadays with the alpha changes, it's a lot better. Uh, out of all the pet changes, all of these ones are pretty good. I didn't, uh, I don't think there was anything bad about those pet changes. The drill engine, omelette, and tank changes are all pretty good. There is the quadrupling of fuel usage from Sunny Side, but I think that's fine, because fuel is not really that much of an issue. And, you know, making it more impactful with the Sunny Side might actually make it more of a trade-off. Although, although probably not. But it's a good, it'd be, be good to do that either way. And then what they did with the regular omelette and the green omelette, they are th those are much better changes as opposed to just giving fuel every now and then, reducing or making it so that it only consumes fuel a certain amount of time, is a much better way of going about a fuel saving omelette. Uh, the sixteen new items are all generally pretty good, except from the. Bryn more items, but I'll get into that after these good changes. Uh, the dwarven event, the dwarven event improvements are also good. Uh, new fuels, they're also good. And then the neutral changes, which I, th these are changes. Okay, first of all, first of all, the crystal hollows requirement increase. It kind of goes with the rest of their changes. It's not necessarily a good or bad change. It just sort of goes with it. The crystal nucleus RNG meter. I put this in neutral just based off of my own opinion, but I think this would, if we're going off of the general player base, it's probably a, a good change. But I like the idea of RNG allowing for different gameplay as opposed to just grinding a certain amount of time and getting it. Because, oh, maybe you get it early. Or maybe you never get it. Uh, I, I don't know. Personally, I like that sort of thing. I think that's... I think it's a kind of cool thing, although I get I understand that for Iron Man players it's not that good to be locked out of certain things because of, of not getting an RNG. Either way, it's a new it's probably a good change for everyone, as I said. But the pink number is two thousand changes in in the neutral changes. I don't really have a big opinion on the pink number is two thousand changes. It's okay, and removing all the mithril powder drops from treasure chests in the crystal hollows. This may be actually a good change, however, if there's not a real good way to get Mithril Powder in, in the very beginning, then I can see this turning a lot of people off of getting into mining, which is a little bit of a concern. But, you know, as long as you can get Mithril Powder relatively easily, I think it'll, this will be fine. While I was making this video, the Day 3 changes have dropped, and they've added more Mithril Powder um, sort well, Maybe not sources, but there's they've increased powder gain essentially. They've added a few ways of getting mithril powder. So hopefully that remedies um oops, sorry. Uh, hopefully that remedies this point. But it's still a concern, but I don't know. I'm assuming that the mithril powder that they've added there should be um good enough. Now, as for the bad changes, not all of these are things that I don't think they should do. The gauntlet changes, for example, 
and maybe the battle changes. I can understand, and I see they're very adamant in not having having the fifteen percent bonus, and it, there's a decent reason for that. However, um, I noted this down just to make sure I remembered it. But it's it's pretty much that Bal wasn't only its pristine buff, which it seems like the admins were mainly concerned about the pristine buff, maybe. I mean, other than it being 15% of everything. They only gave it back pristine. And I think that's a... I think that's a disservice to the battle. Mainly because it means that you can't do Magma Fields and Mithra anymore. You can't do... Uh, mag well, I mean, you can do Magma Fields gems, but... I, I think not ha not being able to do Magma Fields Mithril is a very, uh, you know, it's it's a big loss in my opinion. I think they should keep it about. Being able to instant mine green Mithril at a certain point is pretty fun. Now, down here we can see the battle changes. If, now nah, this is what I'm proposing, if they gave... Um, in Bal's Furnace buff, it gives you 3 Pristine. I personally think that they should change it from 3 Pristine to maybe 1.5 or 2 Pristine, but then give 1,000 Mining Speed, maybe 1,500, uh, and 200 Fortune, or maybe 100 Fortune. You know, make, sort of make those align with the amount of extra money that you would get uh, mining gemstones. But you want to have the Mining Speed from Bal, because then it would allow you to get enough mining speed to insta mine mithril or gold, for example. And I think it's much better to do it that way because you can still have those methods of magma fields, mithril, and gold uh, being insta mineable, for example. Um, now, the way what well, I'm hoping, because currently on alpha it was a 350% buff or two, uh, times by. 3.5, almost said 2.5 there, but it's a 350% buff, or it was, but they did say in the patch notes that they have changed this to a 400% buff, which is still 100 less than on main as so far, which is currently a minus 12% nerf in peak mining speed that you can get. However, it goes over the 36,000 mining speed threshold. And that's important because that then allows you to mine uh, obsidian and gold. You can instant mine that stuff. However, this is only possible with the extra mining speed that they've added. So in the update, the overall stat changes are here as follows. So they have nerfed mining fortune 1 and 2 quite significantly. And if you include uh, blue cheese in that, it also loses another 5 fortune. And then another 50 fortune loss from uh, Mining Madness, which they changed to old school. Okay, sorry about this part of the video where I uh, did not have the right numbers. That is partially because in the day three post, they have uh, remedied this. So... This now gives mining speed, sorry, uh, mining, well, yeah, it gives mining speed against dwarven metals again, but unfortunately on alpha it doesn't have the change actually active, it just says it in the post, on the alpha post, so it's no longer 250 dwarven fortune, it is whatever amount of dwarven metal speed it will give, um, but this means that these are the actual overall stat changes with the update. You'll get 775 mining speed, and these are the fortune losses. And yeah, it's you know loss overall. But if you include if you include the um the drill reforges or pickaxe reforges, it's a little bit more. You know you can deal with it a little bit better. And another thing they have removed is the temporary fortune from Dwarven O's with day 3. 
So the temporary fortune you get is actually a 70. So including that 70 t uh, temporary fortune, that brings it down to about 45 uh, mining, sp mining fortune loss against ores and dwarven, mi uh, dwarven metals. Uh, but if you don't want to include the temporary fortune, because temporary fortune is kind of annoying, it is that 115 mining fortune loss, or 190 if you don't have a reforge. That gives you mining fortune, like me, using or refined. But there you go, those are the stats. They'll be wrong in the rest of the video, but these are the correct stats. Okay, second amendment to the stats changes section. The uh, Diamondite Reforge doesn't give 75 fortune, it gives 75 block fortune. Uh, I cannot read, apparently. But anyway, uh, the next best Reforge that I found for this purpose is uh, the Dwarven Geode. It gives 5 less fortune, roughly. Um, it's probably 6, but, you know, it's around that, because it doesn't give a... It has a bonus which gives a certain amount of fortune based on your stats. And based on, like, maxed out stats, it should be around um, 70 fortune as opposed to 75 fortune. But obviously that 75 fortune is block fortune. So these are actually... <laughs> this will be the final time, okay? These are the actual stats. But there you go. So against ores, you get an extra 50 fortune, but everything else, this would be gemstones, uh, dwarven metals, I'm assuming, don't get included in that ores section. So you would have less fortune against ores and gemstones. You would have less fortune against uh, dwarven metals and gemstones. So that, yeah, there's minus 50 fortune there, and then minus 250 from the mining fortune 1 and 2 perks. And then they also nerfed the pristine enchantment by a half, so you have minus two and a half pristine. But the buffs are as follows. These are the things that they've added into the game. So you have the flow state enchantment, gives you 600 mining speed. That is part of the permanent mining speed that I'm putting here, although it's not really permanent. So this max mining speed that I've got here is including flow state, so you will have to be mining um for a certain amount of time and a certain amount of blocks to be able to get this insta mine um so without flow state you're not going to be able to insta mine and that is a pretty significant change so you with the extra 50 percent more from mining speed boost that they're reintroducing they're not giving you back mining or they're not giving you back Instamine unless you're using Flow State. Um, but other changes within this update is the Reforges. Now, actually, the Reforges can make up for a little bit. It's just that I use Refined, of course, which is pretty much no speed. And I think it is no speed. It's no speed, but in compensation, you get Mining Wisdom, which if you know my channel, then you know why I'm using Refined. But the, the new reforges actually will introduce some variety in reforges for drills. And maybe I'll have to buy another drill in that case, because, you know, reasons. <laughs> Gotta have every drill with every reforge. Every drill for a purpose, I guess. But diamondite and amber are the main ones. So amber's mainly for mining speed. You get an extra 125 mining speed from... Um, from Auspicious. This is the, the baseline that I had for this is Auspicious, which gave you 75 mining speed and 8 fortune. Um, so realistically, that should be 8 fortune less than 75. But, oh well. Either way, uh, with Diamondite, you get an extra 25 mining speed and it gives you 75 fortune, but 8 less fortune, because Auspicious gave you 8 fortune. If you're using the Silverfish pet, you get another 150 mining speed. And then also, the Scatha pet 
borrowed, I think it, the perk that gives 125 mining fortune is now on the pet itself as a stat. It can be boosted via a minus relic then. However, Quick Claw is still better for this. It gives you 50 mining speed and fortune, but a minus relic will not give that much. So if we just do the calculation here, it changes your 125 to 160 something, which is a 41.25 increase. And the mining speed that it gained was not more than 125, so it'd pretty much be the same thing there. So, you know, Quick Claw is still better on Scatha, even though it has a lot of uh a lot of more a lot more base stats on it now however the thing that you can do with scatha now that you've got a minus relic on it because the minus relic actually boosts the pet stat itself the quick claw only gives you an extra 50 speed and fortune to you and not to the pet because minus relic gives it to the pet you can then use chimera with your gauntlet although gauntlet has been nerfed um and i'll get into that a little bit later but you can use the Minus Relic with the Gauntlet to have a little bit of more of a boost than you would have if you used Quick Law. Um, not that you would ever do that, though. I highly doubt there's any reason to do that financial-wise. I don't think it'll ever become cheaper to do that method than something else, especially if it's Chimera. <laughs> it's probably not a great... Um, it's, it's not a thing. It's not real. Don't do that. Anyway, to move on, you get an extra 200 mining speed from an Amber Drill engine now. There is a few sources of temporary fortune, which I don't like. I don't like the idea of temporary fortune, because these temporary fortune sources add up to 100 extra temporary fortune. There's 100 temporary fortune you need to refresh every hour, and that will be annoying, especially the gemstone gauntlet ability, because... That isn't as simple as just buying a Filet of Fortune or a Dwarven there. Because you can just buy those. I'm assuming those will be on the Bazaar. And if not, then you have to actually grind those out. Um, but you can get an extra 50 Fortune quite easily with those two. With that one, you have to kill a bunch of random mobs. And only then you get that extra 50 Fortune for an hour. It's a pain in the ass to do that. And it'd be annoying to lose 100 fortune, especially since we're getting a 305 fortune uh, nerf just in general from Heart of Mountain. But to move on, we get an extra 25 speed from the Haste Artifact, another pristine from the Heart of Mountain. Um, the Amber Scroll can now be applied to pickaxes with an ability, so... When, once you get your first ability, you can get an extra 30 mining speed on ability use. I haven't tested whether this uh, applies before your mining speed boost or after it, which is somewhat of a big thing, because it either goes from being plus 30 on a mining speed boost to being plus, you know, a few hundred, or a hundred and something. But anyway, your first polar void now gives you five mining fortune, the Rhinestone Infusion is a new thing from the Essence Shop, which gives you 20 Gemstone Fortune. And then from the Heart of the Mountain, that I talked about a little bit ago, you get an extra 100 Ore Fortune, depending on the perks. Um, and then 250 Dwarven Mines Fortune, or 350 Dwarven Mines Fortune, depending on the perks. Uh, another 400 Fortune in the Mineshaft, and you get an extra 400 Speed in the Mineshaft as well. I haven't included that in here because just... I wasn't able to get it with the tree that I used. And the tree that I used was um, probably the most optimal. But I guess we'll see. And then fortune-wise, we are losing 290 permanent fortune. We lose 305 from the Heart of Mountain. But then we gain, uh, where is it? 10 mining fortune permanently from Dwarven O's. And 5 fortune from your first Polar Void. Now, in the post for Alpha, they said that you'd get a little bit of your mining stats back from reforges. 
However, fleet only gives you 75, so if we include that, it's still a 215 fortune nerf. It's a minus 1.5 pristine nerf. However, they have introduced gemstone spread, so I can understand why they would nerf pristine. Although, as I said before with the bow changes, I think they should reintroduce some mining speed and fortune into bow, uh, and maybe nerf bow's pristine a little bit so that we can get that mining fortune, or oh, sorry, the uh, magma field's mithril method back, as well as maybe um, maybe magma field's gold. Mines of different gold, that is. And gemstones is a big nerf, so minus 270, and then minus 195 with fleet. But the big thing is, obviously, is mining speed boost being nerfed. Mining speed, be mining speed boost being nerfed to what it was at the beginning of the update means you can get a maximum speed with this, at least. Uh, you're getting 32,000 mining speed, which is a bit unfortunate because this means that you're... It's not only that you lose my, uh, the instant mining from Magma Fields Mithril, which, to be fair, is a little bit more of a stretch goal because you need 48,000 mining speed for that. With this, you lose instant mining on obsidian and gold and anything with a hardness value of 600, which is a good few things, actually. But gold and obsidian are the ones that come to mind. And I think that's a big loss. However, they did change it from what I saw in the patch notes. They've reintroduced another 50%, which does allow you to instant mine. But that, as I said before, is only with flow state. Unless they're planning to add in more sources of mining speed, now that Bal isn't a thing, now that mining speed boost is a little bit less good, um, maybe they're more willing to add mining speed as a base stat in the future. Hopefully. Because if so, then we'll be able to get back to instant mining gold and obsidian, which is a nice method and I think is good for the economy and gameplay wise. It might, you know, it kills obsidian pretty much if we can't instant mine it. Um, kills obsidian as a method. And I think it's fun. You know, obsidian is fun. It's not a method that I've done a lot of, but I also know that gold, you know, you also lose instant mining on gold, and that's a massive thing as well. And gold is also a really fun method. We lose two good methods with it going below 36,000 mining speed on speed boost. Uh, and then, you know, you lose another method of Magma Fields Mithril if it goes below 48k. So three, three lost methods with this. Or three lost methods with it being below 36k, but only, only one lost method which they probably aren't particularly fond of. But I, I still like Mag Magma Fields Mithra. I think Magma Fields Mithra is a good thing to, to keep. Either way, either way, uh, you can see a little bit of my reasonings for why I don't think, or why I think that they should do this. Maybe they should make it 1.5 pristine if they think that extra mining speed and fortune is a bit too much but I think the mining speed is the more important thing because you want to keep that uh, you want to keep those things alive the gold and you want to make sure that you can still instant mine stuff because that, that's what affects methods really but either way the hearth and mountain tree changes are as follows we have the perks that have been moved around a bit and there's been a bunch of name changes as well, but there's a lot of perks that have been moved around. And interestingly, a very interesting thing is precision mining used to be a quite far away ability. Nowadays, it's a tier two ability, so you can get it really early on. This is a brilliant change. I love this change because it actually makes precision mining a lot more useful. And I think it it's just a really good change. I really like precision mining being really early because that's the time where it takes a block to in the beginning is where you have that time where it takes ages to mine a block and precision mining is perfect for that because it takes so long you can actually aim at the block or you can actually aim at the uh the particle and get some use out of that extra 30 percent mining speed that you're getting with precision mining so i really like that precision mining movement that's a really good change they've done and then 
other things that they, you know, they, they've moved a bunch of things about. And the way that they've moved it about means that you can ignore a lot of things that you couldn't ignore before, like Lonesome Miner and... Uh, hold on a minute. What was the perk? Lonesome Miner and Grey Explorer. You only need Grey Explorer for powder grinding. So once you have all the powder you need, you don't need Great Explorer anymore. And Lonesome Miner is not really... It doesn't give it doesn't give you any mining stats, so you do want to avoid it generally. And with all these perks being moved around, you can ignore those two perks, which is quite nice. And to move on, they have removed seven perks... And here, uh, what? Uh, and they've added the seven perks in replace, in replacement. They've removed these seven perks and they've added these seven perks. So orbiter, which gave you extra vanilla XP when you mine ores, that is a nice perk to remove because it was generally pretty useless. It was a tier four perk. Um, you know, it's good that they removed that. Uh, Goblin Killer, they have removed this one, so you can no longer get double powder from... Well, I mean, it's not really double powder, is it, with, with it being 200 and Golden Goblins existing, but you you can no longer get that extra 200 powder from killing Goblins. Star Powder, which was three, oh, yeah, triple powder near Fallen Stars, that is no longer a thing. However, um, we kind of get that back with Front Loaded, because Front Loaded gives triple powder. Although I can't remember whether it was just gemstone powder or it was other powders as well. Moving on, so dust collector and excavator. Those have been removed, so we can no longer get extra fossil dust and fossils from scrap. This is a pretty good change, I think. The these weren't really like the only times that you would use these abilities is specifically when you're well, for the more fossil dust thing is when you're actually doing the fossil excavation thing, you would just you, you would just use your <laughs> you would just only get that perk when you're doing that. Otherwise, you wouldn't need that perk at all. And then excavator, more fossils from scrap. It's the exact same thing. You only use that when you're actually doing fossils. So these two perks, getting getting rid of those two perks is a really good idea. So getting rid of double powder from killing glacite mobs is also a pretty good one. Uh, it wasn't really... You didn't really get that much powder from killing glacite mobs, and it's just a good perk to get rid of, I think. It wasn't that useful. And there's out of these perks, these are a lot better than these ones, in general. And then crystallized is, you know, incentivizing you to mine near, near falling stars. Sorry, fallen stars. And crystallize was also quite difficult to get to early game, so you wouldn't really be able to get that extra boost early game either. From these perks that have been removed, they're not really great perks, but then these perks have been added, and these perks are a lot better. We have Blockhead, giving 100 block fortune, which is your red sand, your regular sand, mycelium, those types of things. It's really nice uh, to be able to get more of this, and we're getting it in the Heart and Mountain tree now, and it's a pretty decent perk. And it's um, it's a bit of a connecting perk in the tree that I've used. Uh, they added Subterranean Fisher, and I, I still don't get why they've added fishing into my mining. Um, I hope that perk gets removed. Anyway, we have Keep It Cool, plus 20 heat resistance. Now that they've changed the heat, which I will get into later. That could be useful in some cer certain circumstances. Maybe it'll... <laughs> Maybe not. But it it's somewhat useful, potentially. Maybe they need to up that heat resistance to make it more useful. Mainly because it is a, it's an entire token that you could be getting some of the better perks, like fortune, mining speed, like you could get an extra 400 mining speed or 400 fortune in a mine shaft, which is pretty significant, the 400 fortune one. Um, but instead you get 20 heat resistance, you can stay in 
in the magma fields slightly longer. Uh, 20 heat resistance isn't particularly big either. It's okay. I feel like they could make that a little bit better, especially especially as high as a perk as it is. Steady hand. 20 or oh, sorry, 10 gemstone spread in mine shafts. In theory, that's a really, really good perk. Although it's only in the mine shafts, they really want to incentivize you to mine in mine shafts. And the problem with that is you can't stay in mine shafts for particularly long because of cold. Although, having said that, they have introduced more cold resistance with this update. You can, you can get an extra 10 from warm hearted and an extra 5 from the potion. So they have added more cold resistance with this update, but I don't think it will be enough to make it worth it to stay in mine shafts. But we shall move on. So Vanguard Seeker, you can get more Vanguard mine shafts. That's... I, I don't know how I feel about that one. It's an okay perk. It's an okay perk. That'll be helpful for Iron Man's now that I think about it. So Mining Master, they've added plus one pristine. That's a very good perk, of course. But that is in the context of losing two and a half pristine from the enchantment. So that's just where they give you back some pristine. But it is quite nice. And then Crystalline, you get more gemstone crystal mine shafts. Not the greatest um, one for regular mining. But maybe maybe it's a good one for perfect flippers. It's an okay perk, probably. Regardless, all of these perks, except from the fishing one, all these perks are probably all better than these ones. And then the other things that have been changed about the Heart of Mountain Tree are these perks. In the patch notes, it didn't say that it's been changed to 250 Dwarven Metal Fortune. And in fact, there were some other things in the update in on Alpha that uh, weren't included in the patch notes. I mean, there's a bug where Pristine 5, or Prismatic 5 as it's now called, it only gives you 2 Pristine as opposed to 2.5 Pristine. And I'm assuming this one is probably a bug. But, oh, other thing that is bugged on Alpha is the Maniac Miner ability. Now I can't really talk about the Maniac Miner ability because the, 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 the Maniac Mining ability that they described on Alpha is not the same as what it is on Alpha. So in the post, they said you'd get an extra 15 fortunate max for every block that you break during the abilities, or during when the ability is active. But on Alpha, it's just what it is on main, but Instead of giving you 1 mining speed for 10 mana, it gives you 10 mining speed for 10 mana. So the perk changes. Uh, mining Madness has been renamed to Old School and now gives 100 fortune against ores as opposed to 50 speed and 50 fortune. It's actually a kind of big nerf. Um, although it's maybe a buff against ores, it's, you know, you don't get the extra 50 fortune against gemstones or dwarven metals anymore. And I think overall that's probably a nerf. Uh, Vein Seeker is no longer a thing, and now it's an ability that increases the chance of getting rare events like worms, scatters. It's a better perk than Vein Seeker, I'll give you that. And I guess with the change that they've made to abilities where they want you to stick with one ability, which is weird because they've added, or well, not they've added, but they've they have six abilities. And, you know, I'll get into this point now, the switching abilities removal. So with the update, they have made it so that you have to wait for the cooldown of the ability that you've used before you can use another ability. So this makes it so you can't use mining speed boost and pick at the same time anymore, which is a pretty significant nerf, along with the fact that pick has also been nerfed. Okay, so at this point in the video, I went on about pick -obulus. So I've decided to do some testing instead of going off of numbers that I uh, didn't know about. So, the changes to Pigobolus are a bit of an interesting one. Because 
essentially, when I was doing commissions, I would be getting around 28 to 42 blocks per Picobulus. And on Alpha, this goes to about 14 to 21. So you may think, oh, well, the Alpha changes is better then, because you can use the Alpha Picobulus two and a half times more than the main one. And two and a half times the average of this is, uh, I'm guessing, more than this. In fact, I, I didn't realize this before. I was just putting down numbers. This is exactly half. <laughs> it's exactly half the amount. Um, but regardless, you can use this two and a half times more, potentially even more than two and a half times with more pickaxe ability cooldown reductions. But even though it's good for comms, that doesn't mean it's a buff in general. That's because the maximum I could get from the alpha version is 37. And I think maybe I got to like 50 or 60 before. The average that I got on main was around, or was around 171. And the main pick up of this can go up to around 205. So it's a pretty big pick up of this nerf, to be honest, because let's say it was, um, let's say that most you could get really is like 60 from the new pick up of this. This would mean that even if you used it two and a half times as much, you would only be getting like less than an average uh, main Picobulus. Which I think is a bit of a shame, especially considering Picobulus is good in conjunction with Mining Speed Boost, because you can use it alongside Mining Speed Boost, but I think by itself it's not really good enough to deserve a nerf. It really isn't. Like Mining Speed can easily carry itself. Picobulus, you know, it was mainly good because it could be used with mining speed boost. And if they want you to only use Picobulus, then they either need to probably keep the radius the same and then maybe revert the uh, cooldown changes. Or at that point, I think it would compete nicely with... Sorry about that. It would compete nicely with mining speed boost and the other abilities anyway. So the other abilities, if, if I had to just talk about the other abilities, so Hazardous Miner has been changed to an ability which gives mining spread. And you get an extra 25 mining spread permanently because of how it works out with the cooldown. You get 100 mining spread and it lasts for a certain amount of time. And then there's a cool off period of 90 seconds, I believe. Um, but essentially, it's active a quarter of the time, so you can say that you get 25 mining spread permanently. That could be good, and it's certainly better than Hazardous Miner. But with the way that the tree that I've made is set up, it would be quite difficult to get mining spread without sacrificing a good amount of, of things. It is a good change, that one, though. It's a very good change. Kenai has been changed to Miner's Blessing. So we get 30 magic find on mining islands, which I... Ah, uh, scatter. That's what that's for. Scatter miners would probably use that perk. That one's probably okay. Eager adventurer. We get an extra 200 mining speed from what it was. It has been... Well, these, uh, these have been renamed, I believe. Actually, no, I think that one's the only one that's been renamed. Both of these have been buffed, and their Mining Speed and Mining Fortune buffs have been doubled. So you get an extra 400 speed and 400 fortune in mine shafts from when you have those perks. And they're easier to get. So that is a, that's a pretty good change there. And Sub-Zero Mining to Metalhead, you get 100 Glacite Fortune. Or you did get 100 Glacite Fortune with Sub-Zero Mining. Now that it's Metalhead, you get 100 uh, Dwarven Metal fortune. Now, that obviously isn't uh, bugged and it's not supposed to be metal speed or anything, but uh, basically it affects more stuff, which is quite nice. So, I think now that I've talked about all those things, we'll go into the bad changes. So, for the gauntlet, the way that they've changed it is they've reduced the amount of mining speed that the gauntlet has, they've reduced its breaking power, and they've added this ability, which gives you 50 mining speed 
if you, sorry, 50 mining fortune if you kill some mobs and then uh, activate the ability and it lasts, it gives you 50 mining fortune for an hour. I, as I said, I don't like the temporary buffs just because I don't think it is easy to incorporate into root or into your general grinding and it unless I feel like unless it's significant there's a potential that it could just decrease your rates and therefore no one will really go for it or maybe you use the gauntlet on the glacite tunnel mobs and technically you get it that way uh I just, I don't like the temporary nature of it, personally. But I think the more pressing change with Gauntlet is that it is now, you know, there's a lot less mining speed on it and, uh, and there's uh, less breaking power with it. Now, personally, I disagree with it. Oh, I disagree with the approach because I think they should make Gauntlet more of an end game pickaxe mining tool sort of thing than an early game one even though now it, it like currently it, the progression for mining tools is gauntlet into 655 into uh divin's Troll. but i think that's more of an issue that they have solved with this update that drills become a lot cheaper now but i think they should have made gauntlet more expensive personally i think gauntlet being the third best mining tool right now I feel like it should have been... I feel like they should keep its stats as it is, but make it more expensive. That's just how I think they should have gone about it. And then, what would you do for uh, your mining tool upgrades between Gauntlet and your first pickaxe? I think they should have more mining tools between them, and maybe the 355 and the uh, 455, etc. And the temporary mining... Um, sorry, temporary mithril drills that don't have a good upgrade path. Maybe those are supposed to be the thing that you get earlier game. But I think Gauntlet would be best has served as a later game weapon. Mining tool. You know, Gauntlet. So, the heat changes, including Bal. So you no longer get heat immunity from Bal. And looking back on it, I remember putting this in the bad changes, but I think this can be okay. From what I've seen, the amount of heat resistance that you get from Bal and your Divan armor, you can get about an hour-ish before you die from heat. I think maybe they should add in more heat resistance sources um, or maybe make it so that you can regenerate or, or lose heat faster when you're outside, even though they have made it, you know, they've made heat reduce twice as fast as it once did. But it's a bit annoying and it does remove the flow state that they want to they want to add, maybe. It removes your flow. It takes you out of your flow state, that is. But um, it's probably not that bad of a change. But I think they should probably add in more heat resistance into the game. The switching abilities removal is a pretty big one. In that, because you could switch abilities, it's a big nerf to remove that. And I don't think the uh, ability reduction cooldown from Bal and from the tanks is significant enough to unnerf that, unless they did want to just nerf mining in general, which they have done quite a decent amount with less mining fortune, uh, less peak mining speed boost, and the abilities switching removal. But I think they should not enough mining personally because it wasn't particularly overpowered but other than that they should I, I don't think this should be a thing i think they should allow you to use multiple abilities at once um 
to then balance around that. Because I feel like switch, picking one ability is a bit difficult because you want if you want only one ability to be used at one time, then you need to make the abilities quite unique. Whereas if you didn't have that restriction and you could use multiple abilities, then you could have a situation where you could use Maniac Miner and then you know you could use Maniac Miner as your ability that you use more often. And then when your mining speed boost comes back online, then you can get a much bigger boost. But then, you know, you can average out the mining speed boost and Maniac Miner and all the other abilities. You can average out the abilities to make it so that more abilities are used as opposed to you pick one ability. And if one ability isn't as good as the other abilities, it just essentially doesn't get used at all, which is what I feel will happen to mining spread. I think they should not do that personally, but it is what it is. So the battle pet changes I've already talked about, mainly just due to you losing that instant mine on uh, Magma Fields, Mithril, Gold, and Obsidian, and I think you probably lose some in other instant mines as well. But that sort of takes away a good amount of methods and doesn't introduce many more methods. So I think it is more that it removes a lot more methods than it adds in or you know balances the game so i think you know as i said they should probably add in some mining speed to the furnace ability along with fortune and stuff uh and then the brinmore items the brinmore items are much more to to do with the temporary fortune which i've been talking about earlier so it's it's a bit annoying to have to do the temporary buffs every hour and to make sure that you have those temporary buffs enabled, otherwise you're losing 100 fortune. And 100 fortune is pretty significant. It's, it, it just, it's a bit more annoying than, than anything. So the half amount of fortune nerf, um, this is more so negative in the sense of was it their overall goal to nerf mining? Because if it was, then they have certainly, you know, nerfed mining. I don't think they should have nerfed mining, which is why I've put that in the bad changes section. I don't think that they should have nerfed it as much. I think we should get some fortune back. So this is an interesting bad change of efficient miner no longer affecting gemstones. So now that it doesn't affect gemstones, and we have a specific mining spread that does affect gemstones, it makes gem commissions a lot slower, which I'll show now. But as you can see before the update, you know, you can do that commission really quickly. Nowadays, you can just, or well, not nowadays, the alpha version, it, it takes ages to, um, it takes ages to get that commission done. So I think the simple solution to that one is to just reduce the amount of gems that you need for that commission. Um, and then that would be fixed. So the mining speed boost nerf I've talked about earlier and the mining spread being disabled on private islands. I think that should not be a thing because this obviously removes cobble gems um, you know, the the custom cobble gens which I've put on the channel. And I think they should stay. I think there's a lot of good there's a lot of good that comes from those cobble gens. More so in the designing point and the you know, I, I think maybe there could be a a mining spread nerf on private islands, but I think having them being able to be used with cobble gens is a good thing. Just because it adds in a lot more variety for cobble gens than just, uh, you know, make your singular line cobble gen. There's a lot of cool gameplay stuff that you can get out of it. And a lot more content, essentially. You can get a lot of content, maybe, out of different 
cobble gem designs, and I think it'd be a shame to get rid of that. I think it would just be a lot better for gameplay-wise to have those um, the cool custom gens that we have right now. Well, not really custom gens, but, you know, basically, you can have some cooler gens, and I think that's a good thing to have. Okay, so the key takeaways, I think the update overall is good, but has these downsides to it. The gauntlet changes like I talked about earlier. I think they should keep its stats, but increase its costs. Um, and then obviously have things between it and the beginning of the game in mining tool-wise. Um, heat changes. I say a lot here, but a lot could mean anything. And I think if we had an extra 50 to 100 heat resistance, that would be good. Currently, from what I could calculate, with Divins and Bal, we would get around 40 or 50 minutes in the magma fields without getting 100 heat. Um, I think that should be a bit higher. I think an hour and a half to an hour and 50 minutes would be good because you do have to, it does take you out of the flow state, you have to reduce that heat, go outside, etc. <laughs> go outside, you know what I mean, you go, go out of the magma fields. Um, but it's, that's not really one of the important ones of these bad changes, neither is the gauntlet. I think probably the more important ones are the gemstone spread making gem commission slower. I think they could just re reduce the gems needed by that commission by a third, um, maybe not even a half. I, I think a third would probably be good there. Uh, temporary fortune, I don't like. I, it, it's kind of annoying. Um, the Heart of the Mountain nerf, well, not Heart of the Mountain nerf. Generally, the Heart of the Mountain got buffed, but the fortune nerf from Heart of the Mountain, I think, uh, I think we should have some fortune back, personally. The switching abilities removal, I think they should buff abilities more to make up for this. Um, maybe not mining speed boost, as long as we can insta mine gold and obsidian with mining speed boost, I think. Mining speed boost is fine, because I'm assuming that mining speed won't be locked in after this update. We may get some mining speed here and there, which will obviously increase mining speed boost's peak over time. Um, but as for now at least, as long as we can insta mine gold and obsidian, I think, that will be a good position to, to have it in. The battle pet changes. I think Bal should have some mining speed and fortune in the furnace perk, um, instead of it just being pristine, uh, like I said in the video. And finally, I think the mining spread being disabled on private islands is a bit unfortunate for cobble gents, like I said. If it is a little bit too overpowered for cobble, you can reduce its spread by, you know, you can make this mining spread half as effective on private islands. Um, but yeah, I think these are the, the main takeaways from the update. The, it's all good changes except from these issues, but these could be the remedy to those issues. Um, obviously some being more important than others, but here, these are the key takeaways, I think, for me at least. Okay, so I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about with the update. Uh, I, there's a good chance that I've missed some things. There's a very good chance that I've missed something pretty important. So I will have a pinned comment in uh, the comment section, of course, of this video. And I will update that with things I've missed or other changes or anything else. I will update stuff with that pinned comment. And yeah, if you're... If you think there's anything missing from that, it may be in the pinned comment, or it will be added to the pinned comment if you, you know, make a comment, and I'll add it to the pinned comment. But otherwise, that is it for my thoughts on this update, and if you liked this video, make sure to like it, and catch me in my next streams, where I'll be doing Glacite Tunnels mining as usual. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.